Hello everyone, my name is Zhi Peng Wang. Uh, I'm a PhD student from Imperial College London. I'm here to talk about our recent work, Speculative Multipliers Quantify, Quantify On-Chain Leverage Risks. This work is joined with Kai Hua Chen, Duke Vemi, and Arthur Jive. So let's first briefly introduce DeFi. So what is DeFi? DeFi, Decentralized Finance, which is a financial infrastructure and open, permissionless, and highly inter, uh, interoperable protocol stake. DeFi can be built on smart contract enabled blockchains, such as Ethereum and uh, um, Binance Smart Chain. We have noticed that since the last uh, three years, DeFi has grown rapidly. And there are many DeFi services, such as Uniswap, which, which means uh, exchanges, and also lending and borrowing platforms, and also stable coins. So in this week, in this work, we will focus on on-chain lending and borrowing. There are different uh, actors and components in a uh, lending platform. First is, is the lending pool, which is governed by smart contract as uh, which is governed by smart contracts, and there was so lenders who will deposit their assets into the lending pool and they can choose to withdraw the assets after several time and it, they will gain some uh, some some interests and there were so borrowers who will collateralize the one token to to borrow another token and there were so liquidators who will monitor the state of the of a uh, borrowing position and they will liquidate the uh, those is position one was uh, they become unhealthy. We will talk this in detail later. And there was a price oracle, um, who which will provide the data, especially the price data, to the learning pool. And uh, there are two types of uh, borrowing. First, over collateralized borrowing. Uh, so in this case, the borrowers. Uh, needed to collateralize more assets than the assets they borrow, and they can use the, the borrowed assets freely. And the second one is under collateralized borrowing. In this case, the amount of the collateral is less than the amount of debt. However, the borrowers can't use cannot use the borrow, borrowed assets freely, which means the ways to use the uh, borrowed or the collateralized assets are fixed or predefined by, for example, the lending pool or smart contracts. We can use one uh, parameters to describe the difference between those two uh, lending types, what, what we call the leverage multipliers. This leverage multipliers can um, describe the span of assets after borrowing. So for over collateralized borrowing, the leverage multipliers is less than two. For example, there are some platforms like MakerDAO, Compound. Okay, for those platform, they are over collateralized and the leverage multiplier is less than two. However, for under collateralized borrowing, the leverage multiplier is larger than two. For example, there are some there are also some platforms such as Alpha Homera. So for over quantilized borrowing, uh, there are many academic work um, researching on this. And in this in our work, we will focus on under collateralized uh, borrowing. So let's look at the system. In this case, as we said. The borrowers can't use the borrowed assets freely. They have to provide their collateralized and borrowed assets into liquidity providing pools to gain some trading phase and they can get some APY. So before we describe this process, let's first introduce uh, AMMs or liquidity providing pools. So AM, uh, so AMMs, which means um, auto, automated market maker, uh, it's, it was a, a pool 
or governed by smart contracts, and their liquidity provider will who will provide some some tokens. For example, in this case, we consider two tokens, token A and token B. The liquidity provider provides tokens into the pool, and there are also traders. For example, there are one trader who wants to swap token A to token B, and uh, for in this swap the trader will also provide some phase and the phase were distributed to the liquidity provider. And uh, in constant product AMM, the amount of the two tokens is constant in the pool, which means, for example, if we consider the X represents the amount of token A, Y represents the amount of token B, okay, the product is constant. We can see that after each swap, the x multiplied by y equals to a constant. Okay, so let's uh, consider an example of under-collateralized borrowing uh, in which the borrowers will provide their collateralized token and their borrowed token to, uh, uh, to uh, AMMs. And for example, the, the pools uh, curve balances to Swap and Uniswap. And we said, if this borrower serves as a liquidity provider and they can get some trading phase, right, from the uh, liquidity providing pools. And finally, they expect that, okay, they will gain some, uh, they will gain some positive IPY. Okay, so first we measured that the distribution of leverage multipliers when borrowers choose different uh, platforms or different uh, tokens. We find that there are uh, 2,800 borrowers opened more than one, more opened more than 10,000 leverage po uh, positions in AASH. And we found that interestingly, when the borrowers, they collateralize and borrow in stable coins, they will choose a higher leverage multiplier. Look at this blue curve. Sorry, look at this green curve. And uh, which means a stable coin means, uh, for example, USDT, DAI, USDC, those is tokens, their price won't change too much over time. And we also find that the average le leverage multiplier of AIHV2 version two is more than uh, three, which is larger than two, right? And uh, we also find that when the borrowers, they choose uh, curve or uh, when they choose curve, they will also choose a higher leverage multiplier. So we also want to we also calculate the closed position to say if the borrower finally they gain a positive APY. But interestingly, we find that for this for those is two hundred uh, for this is two thousand two hundred thirty three closed position, more than seventy two percent of the of the positions, this, this, the borrowers suffered from a negative APY, which means the borrowers, they lose their assets when they use such kind of leverage platforms. So we, will, we, will ask, we want to ask why. Why the, the borrowers, they don't gain assets, we don't, they don't gain some positive APY as, as planned, as expected. Okay, so let's come back to this process for for alpha home run. If we analyze this carefully, we find that there are some potential risks for the borrowers. First is the liquidation risk. As we said, there are some liquidators who will monitor the state of the, uh, of the of borrowing positions and they will monitor, uh, they will liquidate those positions once they become unhealthy. And there are also, as we said, uh, as we said, the, the borrowers will swap and supply those days borrowed and collateralized token into the liquidity providing pool. So in this uh, process, it could have the, there will be arbitrage risks. And uh, finally, in this uh, liquidity providing pools, the borrowers, if they serve as liquidity providers, they will suffer from impermanent loss risk. 
So we will talk the three risks one by one. Okay, let's start from environmental loss risk. So what is environmental loss? Uh, loss? So let's consider uh, a simple situation without uh, the, the leverage multiplier. So let's consider a boiler or a liquidator, let's see, a liquidator in, in Uniswap. This liquidator provider um, provides or supplies three REN token and three USDT token. And if we assume that at the time T, the price between the two tokens is one, okay. And after time delta, okay, the ball, this liquidity provider withdraws tokens from Uniswap. But in this case, we can calculate if this price changes to 0 0.64, okay, in this case, the tokens, the, the amount of tokens will, will change because it should satisfy the the constant product AMM. So in this case, we can calculate that the amount of REN becomes 2.4 and the USDT is uh, 3.75. And we can calculate that, okay, this liquidity provider, he or she will suffer from an impairment loss of more than uh, two point of of uh, of more than two percent. However, interestingly, we find that if we if we still consider this uh, this situation, and if this borrower use utilize the this leverage platform, he or she can mitigate such kind of impairment loss. For example, in this case, okay, before this borrower. Um, uh, supplies the the two can two tokens into Uniswap. This borrower first collateralize uh, the REN tokens and and the borrow USDT token and it will how she will swap the USDT token to REN token, which means uh, it will have a more REN token at, uh, than the beginning. So if the price of R of, of R tokens changes, which means the price of R tokens become more expensive, and it will the borrowers will repay the the borrowing position, and we can calculate that finally uh, the borrowers final return is a positive is positive, which means uh, there is a profit real, uh, realized through leverage and uh, margin trading, right? In this case, although that's, there's, there's still is an uh, impairment loss, however, the final return becomes positive, which means the, the leverage multipliers can, can mitigate, in this case, mitigate the impairment loss. However, it does mean that the the uh, leverage multiplier is always good. If we calculate the final return, we find that the final return is determined by two parameters. First, M, which means the leverage multipliers, and was the price changes. So the case we just mentioned is in the, uh, in the left. So in this case, the price changes to uh, less, than, less than one, right? And uh, if this this borrower choose a higher leverage multiplier, we can see that, for example, in this um, in this yellow yellow curve, it will finally give uh, it will finally get some positive returns. However, if this price changes over one, we can find that the loss will become bigger. So it's more like a gambling game, right? The, the, the larger the, the multiplier is, maybe the returns will be, become larger, but the, was, the loss will also maybe become larger. So it depends on the price changes. Okay, that's for the first risk. Okay, let's continue, consider, let's continue to consider the second risk, arbitrage. As we said that, before a borrower supplies some uh, 
some assets into the liquidity providing pools. This board, uh, the borrowers need to swap their borrowed token um, because to satisfy the, let's see, we can, we can uh, simply consider that uh, to, to satisfy the, the constant product uh, of the AMM, the borrowers need to swap their tokens to, to correspond to, to the amount of tokens in the pool. Okay, so in this case, if this uh, swap is bigger, it will cause the price changes, right? Which means, as we said, it, it, in constant product AMM, okay, if the, if the amount of tokens changes, okay, the price will change. Okay, if this uh, price slippage is, is bigger, then they will be monitored by some arbitrageurs, and the arbitrage will well, arbitrage such kind of transactions. Okay, what does it mean? So let's consider a concrete example. So in this case, there is a borrower in Alpha Homera, and this borrower per swap and provides the borrowed token, the collateralized and the borrowed tokens into Uniswap. And there is arbitrage. This arbitrage will interact with the Uniswap and DYDX, which is, uh, which is, let's say it's a, a lending platform. And there was another exchanges like SUSE's web. Okay, let's see what happened. First, this borrower collateralized uh, more than 2 million USDC and sets the leverage multiplier at more than seven. And then this borrower borrowed um, more, than 11, uh, more than 12 million USDT. Okay, so then this borrower swaps U the USDT to USDC uh, and supplies those tokens into the pool. Okay, in this case, because the amount of swap is quite bigger, then there, there is a, a price slippage, which is monitored, which is discovered by arbitrage. Okay, what does this arbitrage do? Okay, this arbitrage was first borrowed with flash loan. Uh, from DYDX, and uh, this borrower, uh, this arbitrager swaps those the ether to USDC, and then in, in, in SUSE swap, right, the price is is, is smaller than the, and then this uh, this arbitrager swaps those USDC to USDT in Uniswap. I mean the the pool that the borrower just uh, supply, uh, swapped and uh, supplied tokens. And then this arbitrage swap USDT back to Ether. Okay. And uh, this arbitrage will repay the, the borrowed uh, Ether and DYDX. Okay. The, and finally, the, this borrower will find that the repay, uh, he or she repays the debt and received some USDC. We can see in this case, the, the, the amount of USDC received is less than 0 0.4 million, which is quite larger than the initial collateralized USDC. So all those these processes happened during uh, 11 minutes. And we find that finally, this arbitrager will uh, well, this arbitrage again get, got a profit of more than 104 Ether. So, okay, this example shows that if, if a borrower swaps a large amount of tokens, he or she may arbitrage it by some, some arbitragers. So we found that uh, uh, in AASH, they are about they are, they are 149 positions uh, suffered from such kind of arbitrage risk. Okay, that's for the second risk. Let's consider the final one, uh, liquidation risk. As we said before, there are liquidators who will monitor the, uh, the, the position, uh, who will monitor the borrowing positions, and they will liquidate those positions once they become unhealthy. So, how to quantify if a position is unhealthy or not. 
in EH, there is a parameter which, which is called data ratio. And if this data ratio becomes larger than 100%, the liquidators can monitor, uh, can liquidate it. And uh, by repaying the debt and receive the collateral plus some bonus. So we analyze that the data ratio is determined by three parameters. First is a fixed parameter, uh, which, which shows the, the credit that the position gets once uh, collateralized one token and the borrow, borrowing another token. So that kind of, of, uh, of uh, parameter is fixed by the system. And there are two uh, other parameters. First is the it's price changes. And the second is the is a leverage multiplier. So we can find that if even though even we consider the same leverage multiplier at the beginning, the data ratio is less than one hundred percent. But if this price changes, for example, it, uh, the price becomes larger, then the data ratio could become larger than one hundred percent. Then this position becomes um, liquidatable, and the liquidator can can repay the debt. And received the bonus and also received uh, some uh, collateral. So we found that 122 AH positions suffered from liquidation. Okay, that's the three risks we found in such kind of under collateralized lending platform. Okay, finally, let's uh, do a quick summary. Uh, we found that for under collateralized uh, lending platform, there is no KYC and AML. So the leverage platform, they restrict the utilization of debt. And we also find that because of the three uh, financial risks, I mean, impairment loss risks, arbitrage risks, and the liquidation risks, the for borrowers choosing high leverage multiplier doesn't mean they will get higher returns. And uh, so in this case, we found that to attract uh, users to use such kind of uh, under collateralized lending platform, the platform designers, they provide some platform uh, governance tokens uh, to attract the users. For example, on AH, if the user, they, if the borrower, they, they choose high leverage multiplier, they can get some alpha tokens which is another token independent from the whole process we described. Okay, finally, with such kind of under collateralized borrowing platform is still all ongoing. We need a better design for such kind of platforms. Okay, thanks for listening.